Hi, my name is Kevin Hall, CEO of Global Integration. We're specialists in matrix management, virtual teams and global working. In our work, we regularly get involved in the integration of mergers and acquisitions. A high proportion of these, over 70% according to Bain & Co, fail to deliver the shareholder value anticipated. One of the top three reasons for this is the failure to integrate different corporate cultures. In our experience, there are some practical steps we can take to minimise this risk. First, create integration teams early. If the failure to integrate corporate cultures is a major source of problems, then we should pay more attention to this during due diligence. We need to train our integration teams to be able to analyse corporate cultural differences and identify the gaps that are likely to cause challenges. The size of these gaps will often be a good predictor of areas where we should focus more attention in order to be successful. Secondly, we should align intentions and actions. In integration, we usually have three options. One is to assimilate the smaller organisation into the larger one. This often happens when we acquire an organisation for a specific technical capability or market share. The larger organisation rolls out its systems, processes and culture. The second option is to protect, where we want to preserve the unique characteristics, relationships or way of working of the partner. And the third is to create genuinely new synergies based on the two legacy cultures working differently together. However, in reality, we often see a mismatch between the expressed strategy and the reality of what happens. I worked with a small entrepreneurial software company before it was acquired by a large organisation. The large organisation was attracted by their speed of response, flexibility and customer orientation. Their expressed strategy was to protect this and to learn from it. Unfortunately, the managers in the large organisation could not resist interfering in the acquisition. They introduced the large company's grading scheme, colours and expenses guidelines. Pretty soon, the most entrepreneurial of the acquired managers were looking for other jobs and complaining about creeping assimilation. I don't think anyone in the large organisation actively decided to destroy the existing culture, but in the absence of a clear strategy, it just happened. To prevent this, we've developed what we call the best of both workshop. These help to make clear choices about what aspects of the legacy corporate cultures to preserve or assimilate, and to identify areas where new synergies can be created. Our clients use these workshops to help integrate teams with members from the two legacy cultures and to make clear and explicit decisions about what or whether they will share. During merger and integration activity, we can get very focused on the finances and the structure of the deal, but these are rarely the factors that trip us up or cause M&A to fail. The critical factor is how we create new ways of working and a new corporate culture that enables us to deliver the value we planned for. If you would like to find out more about how to train your M&A teams on newly integrated organisations, how to get the best out of working together, you can find out more about this on our website or by talking to one of our specialists. If you'd like to keep up to date with our videos, podcasts and other resources on working in complex companies, please join one of our social networks. In the meantime, I wish you good luck and I hope you found this video useful. Thank you.